the lab uh, today. We'll meet down here at 2.30. Uh, no lab tomorrow, yeah. Is that mm -hmm. right, tomorrow's Friday? Mm -hmm. Good, good to know. Uh, how are we doing on the site finder, the uh, literature assignment? What does that do? Is tomorrow? Mm -hmm. We need to make that due on Monday. No? Okay, we'll remain due tomorrow then. Uh, literature assignment due tomorrow. Um, okay, we have our outline is green. Alkene reactions, yeah. And then we have the one main. White hand out. <coughs> okay, alkene reactions. Uh, we look at addition of HX to alkenes. It can be HBr. It can also be something like HCl. Reaction coordinate diagram. Uh, we can redraw that real quickly. Uh, we had it in our notes. We have reaction progress. Some type of energy. What do we have here? We have how many intermediates in the mechanism? One. And then product. We went from A to B to C. C is lower in energy, yeah, because we made two sigma bonds. You can get your calculator out. A pi bond and two stronger single bonds. It's going to be exothermic. Uh, we did something like this. Yeah? This was our what? Activation energy. That was the rate determining step. The next step requires some activation energy, but, but not much, right? We're falling downhill. It only requires a little bit of uh, activation energy from that point. It's easy to fall downhill. Uh, one intermediate, energy wells, that reaction coordinate diagram. Thermodynamically favored, it's exothermic. Very determining step. We talked about you would not want to heat this reaction, or is that was somewhere else? Uh, entropy, it's an addition reaction. Two molecules going to one. Is that favored by entropy? Mm -hmm. No. Can this reaction happen? Yeah, it can happen. Because it's favored thermodynamically, and overall it's actually favored. But it's not favored by entropy. Okay, there's reaction coordinate diagram. Why does the reaction not occur this way? I want to react this same alkene, which by the way has a name, and you should be watching nomenclature video to be able to name that alkene. You should also know that that alkene is not stereogenic. Remember genic? Mm -hmm. By the way, I thought of a, a term that has genic on the end. Oncogenic, what does that mean? Oncogenic? Leads to cancer. Okay. Or carcinogenic. Uh, okay. Uh, Oncogene. Okay. Uh, stereogenic. The way the molecule is connected leads to stereochemistry. But not in this case it doesn't. This, comp this compound is not connected in a way that leads to stereochemistry. It's not stereogenic. It does not lead to stereochemistry. Okay, why when you do this reaction, the same as above, do we not get this product? Note that we only got the product up there with the halide, the bromide on what carbon? Tertiary <coughs> Okay. Why? Why do we not get the product with the bromide on, uh, on a primary carbon? Basically, when you do these reactions right here, until we do a carbocation rearrangement, what do we add to the alkene? HBr, an H atom and a, bromi and a bromine atom. Here, the bromine is there and the new H is here, right? If I see the new H there? Because the NH on this carbon. You've got to know where your H's are at. 
common mistake is to lose track of your H's because they're not drawn in. You've got to know they're there. So we, we added HBR across the pi bond, the terminology is. Up here we did the same thing, except it's sort of reversed. The H is out here and the bromide is here. Or the bromo. The bromide added there. So why? Well, it, it's all because of what intermediate was formed. Down here, if this happened this way, the first step in this mechanism is reacting, the alkene reacting with what? The H, either covalently or okay, the H. If the H is going to be here, that means that, see these electrons can swing like sort of a, a, a barn door or a gate or something. They can swing this way and go react with H, which is actually what we did up there, or you can swing up or down either way. It remains connected here. Or you can swing it this way. Somebody grab the pi bond and move it towards the H. That's your error movement. Boom. A new H carbon to H bond, carbon to H bond. Okay? Boom. And this would give, I'm getting low here. Boom, boom. There's that. I'll leave room for another bond. We now have bond to H. But what do we have over here? There's only two H's there. What's the charge? Positive. It lost a bond. You've got to see that. Two H's. Then the bromide. Now here I'm, I'm showing it already uh, ionic. I got right there, yeah? The bromide is already there. Then these electrons get added here. Make bond to carbon. That would give that product. Theoretically. That's the same mechanism, but it's reversed. And this is called regiochemistry. Up there, the bromine bonded to the tertiary carbon region. That's a region. Down here, it bonded to the primary carbon region. But this doesn't happen. This reaction is regioselective. It only bonds to the tertiary carbon region. Or site, the tertiary carbon site. Instead of saying site selective, which might actually make more, make more sense. The term is called regioselective. Site selective, regioselective. But you're never going to see site selective in the textbook. So why, did, why is it regioselective for that root but not this root? It all is based on this here, the great determining step. Which carbocation is more stable? The one above, which by the way is called a tertiary carbocation. Isn't the positive charge on tertiary carbon? Yes. <coughs> tertiary carbocation. What type of carbocation is this? A carbocation. That's a primary carbocation. Which one's more stable? Tertiary. 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 And we had a question like this on the test. The tertiary has three rich friends, and SP3 carbon is known to be an inductive failure, <coughs> stabilizing that positive. Down here, we only have one carbon attached. So we have one rich friend. Tertiary is more stable. Okay? I think that is shown down here. Stability of carbocations, tertiary is best, and secondary is primary. The worst is methyl. That is not even primary. It doesn't have one carbon attached. That's called like parent, not even primary. There's a trend. Tertiary is better. There will be other things other than substitution pattern that affects carbocation stability. Carbocation is very common in these reactions. Now, let's, let's add this to the reaction coordinate diagram. We still, this is still A, that's the same as above. Uh, these two are different. Let's call this, that's A, B, and C. Let's call that A, let's call this, uh, <coughs> how about B prime? Does that, does that work? B prime and the product here would be C prime. Where would B prime be if we put it on here? It would be higher than B. We just said that. It would be up in here. 
P prime. Okay? And if, and if, where would C prime be? Very similar. We, we don't need to distinguish between them two. Okay, right here is where we need to look at. If, if the prime root went, what would the energy look like? It starts out at the same, but at some point it becomes different. Would it do that? It's going to a higher energy place? <coughs> which route's going to take place? Which, which, which way is the pathway going to go? The reaction going to go? If you see water going down the road, and it's got a hill like this and a hill like this, which way is it going to go? Lower. It's going to go to the lower pathway. Which way is the reaction going to go? B or B prime? B. B. It's the easier pathway because it's going to a lower energy intermediate. And what do we say about transition states leading to lower energy intermediates? They're typically lower. Usually. Because this is lower than that, the transition state leading to it is lower. That's the way the path, that's, so it does not go that way. It's all based on the carbocation stability of the two different pathways, the two different possible carbocations. Water doesn't run uphill when it can go another way. Energy is not going to be more difficult. Okay? That's why the reaction is regioselected for the, for the bromine to be on the tertiary carbon in this particular case. Okay. Predict products. <coughs> Hopefully you've already predicted these, yeah? What did you get for the first one? top and make bond to H, or do they break away from the bottom and make bond to H? The H can be up here as well. They break away from the top, and that leads to a new bond here. I can draw in the new bond if I want. And then what do we have up here at the top carbon? Carbocation, right? I'm doing mechanism, full mechanism here. Right? Got to be careful. I'm drawing in the new H. How many H's are on this carbon? There's two there. <coughs> Why did I only draw one? Because that's the new one. I'm just drawing the new H. Okay? And then, what type of carbocation did we make? Tertiary. And so this, somebody pull my pin down, make bond, that's what the arrow just did, leaving that up there without a bond, that's a carbocation. Or would you rather go the other way? Would you rather pull the electrons up, make a bond up here to H, the H could be up here, and leave that as a cation? Well, that would be a secondary cation. Which is better? Tertiary. Tertiary. What I did, what's the next step? Cl minus, which is sitting here, comes in and bam, makes bond. <coughs> Nucleophile making bond to carbocation. That very important page we looked at yesterday. And we can show our product. That there? No longer an alkene, it's now alkane. I can never connect my bonds. You see, that's, that's a six-member ring. Sometimes we can 
clarify it's a six member ring. Yeah. You see that's connected? I try to connect it, then it's going to look ugly. Okay. There's a new H here, right? You see the new H? I just did not draw it in at that point. It's there, right, though? Okay. How about the next one? The show product? A common question we will ask is where do you want to make cation? Because that's the intermediate. <coughs> Can someone name the product? Uh -huh, two iota. Two iota what? Yes, two <coughs> iota pentane, right? Where's the new H at? Which carbon is the new H on? One carbon. See the new H? I mean, there's two here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, I mean, they're now. Now three there. See the new H? The intermediate was a carbocation. What type of carbocation? Secondary. Secondary carbocation. Okay. Is the reaction regioselective? Do you expect these two reactions to be regioselective? What's the choice? The choice is for reverse. The new H to be here and the chlorine there. Would you expect that product? No. No, your tertiary cation is better than secondary. Uh, yeah. How about here? Would you expect a secondary cation or a primary? Secondary. These are major products. Yes, regioselective, regioselective. How about, how about the reaction below? Where do you want to make cation at? Left or right? Both of them will be what? Both of them will be secondary. Well, it's the same product as, as above, right? Plus what? <coughs> there's, there's no reason to predict one over the other. They're both going to be secondary. I suspect many of you don't see the two secondary carbocations. Well, you need to sit down and draw them out and see them. Uh, would you expect a third reaction to be regioselective? Site selective? I would. What would, what would be your argument for it to be site selective? There's no, there's no reason. Look at this. What if you wanted to make this product, two iodo pentane. Which star material would be the best if you wanted to make 2 iota pentane by an addition reaction of the alkene with HF? The first one. That would be better. Why? Because it's regioselective. It's regioselective. You're going to get a selective product. Would you rather do a reaction that gives a pro selective product, a product selectively and high yield? Or would you rather do a reaction that gives a mixture of two Thus, neither one in high yield, both in mediocre yield. I'd rather do the regioselective reaction. Because if you want in a high yield, or 
maybe if you wanted to keep your job or something, you would want to propose this reaction. Something that's going to work better. Site selected. Regio selected. Uh, synthesis. Synthesis is going backwards. How would you make this here? How would you make that? Well, at this point, the only reaction we know is a reaction with alkene with HX, addition of HX, to give an alkyl halide. Well, both of these are alkyl halides. How would you make this? In a high yielding regio selective synthesis. Well, the first one is very analogous to what we just looked at, right? Mm -hmm. What would you use? Can you name the starting material? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, the starting material is actually showed right up there. So we can show it just flipped around. It would be this, reacted with what? Yeah. HBr. HBr, there you go. Name of this compound here? One pentene, right? Or would you rather use two pentene? <coughs> Reaction of two pentene would not be regio selective. This is the same thing up here. That's one pentene. It's just flipped around. It's two pentene. Two pentene is not going to be regio selective. How about over there? How would you make that compound? Which is what? Uh, one, uh, one chloro, one methyl cyclohexane? Mm -hmm. One chloro, one methyl cyclohexane. Show a synthesis of that. A regio selective synthesis, if possible. more than one possibility here for a regio selective. Do you have a, Mark, you got a starting material? Can you name your starting material? Cyclohexene? Well, let me draw that on the board. Uh, cyclohexene is uh, that. Is that cyclohexene? And you said one methyl? So let's put a methyl there. We have one position, one, two, methyl to one. Yes, that would react with HCl. I bond to break away this way, yeah, leaving a tertiary carbocation. New H, new H there, see there's a new H there. And then the chloride attacks the tertiary carbocation. Yes. Or would we do it the other way? Would it go this way and make a second year? No. Good, this should be reduced. Is there another? I give you a pen, you say give me another pen, and I give you the same pen with this upside pen. It's the same pen, right? That's the same thing. 
realize it. Is there another? I know it's the same thing, because if you name it, it'd be the same exact name. You've got to understand that. All I did was turn it around. It's the same exact compound. So it's not another answer. Is there another answer, though? It actually is. Anybody got it? I don't think we were able to name this, but what if we put the double bond like that? That is a compound. That's a six-membered ring. The double bond is between these two carbons. Would that give that product if I'm reacting with the seal? Where are you going to make cation at, top or bottom? Bottom. The H plus, this would, these electrons, <coughs> somebody pull my pen up. That's the arrow. Pull the, the, the bond up. What does that give? But actually gives the same exact cation. Reaction of either one of these, because this reacts like this. Both of those reactions give the same cation. Yeah? And then the chloride reacts. This would be re selected. If this would never react, okay, we'd say never. What we're doing is we're predicting major pathways, major products. There's a slight chance you may get the reverse regiochemistry, but very minor product. And we're just basically, we're always, the question is always going to be show the major product. Okay. It doesn't mean the other one is going to be absolutely zero, but it's going to be very, very minor, maybe 2%, 5%. Okay. Um, so it doesn't matter where you put the new hydrogen because on this one it's on a different carbon, that's okay? Well, H is an H. I mean, I if you come this way, the new H is up here. Right. If you come the other way, the new H is here. But an H is an H, and so that's the same either way. Same intermediate either way. Four right attacks, that's why you get the same product because at some point it becomes the same. Okay, uh, which product is favored in the following reaction? Need to think about that a little bit. This brings in another factor for stabilizing carbon cations. And that's resonance. In addition to substitution of primary, secondary, and tertiary, etc., resonance is also a key factor for stabilizing carbocations. You can think about that. Okay, that's reaction, that's from number one, yeah? And we covered everything there. Next reaction is addition of water to give what? Alcohols. And since we're adding water, it can be called a hydration of an alkene. Yeah? Now, alkenes don't react with pure water. No reaction. The skin of an apple contains lots of alkenes in that skin. That skin protects it from rain. The inside of the apple from rain. If alkenes reacted with pure water, when it rained, the skin of the apple would react and it doesn't do that. <coughs> on the other hand, if we include an acid catalyst, okay, strong acid, okay, strong acid catalyst, we can get a reaction. <coughs> And ultimately, water is adding. If you look at the formula, it now has water added to it. But it requires a catalyst, H plus catalyst. And we get an alcohol, right? Is that an alcohol? All right. 
Common catalyst here are sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, HF, maybe some others, but not HX. You would not want to use HCl. Yes, HCl is a strong acid. You don't want to use HCl because you'll get a alkyl chloride, like the previous reaction. We want to use these acids because these acids, the anion, see here X minus will act as a nucleophile. But these anions here will not. <coughs> mechanism, very similar to previous mechanism. The first step is the alkene reacting with H plus. This is actually the catalyst in this case. Maybe from sulfuric acid. So we have this minus, this plus. Where are you going to make cation at, left or right? Same questions. You're going to make tertiary or primary carbocation? Tertiary. Tertiary, correct. Okay. And so these electrons break away from this tertiary carbon and go bond to H. We just made that bond. Often I'll highlight the bond like that. This carbon no longer has the pi bond. It's missing a bond. It's a carbocation. Tertiary. This is the way we would go. What attacks the cation? There's no halide here. And I told you the anions of these will never do anything. This will never do anything. It will, it will never act as a nucleophile. So what can add here? Water can. It has electrons, just like halide did. It's neutral, though. And these electrons can add to the cation. Lone pair makes bond. Now we made that bond there. One lone pair is now bonding. It's a bonding pair. Nothing else happened. We don't magically lose anything. It's just one bond being made. Uh, we need to clean this up here. This needs to be. Uh, this, is, this is no good anymore. This is, the oxygen is now positive because it now has three bonds, one lone pair. Uh, how do we go to a neutral? We need to lose an H. Just the H, not the electrons. This is like losing H plus. Something takes it. Well, the conjugate base can take it. This needs to be shown out. We do mechanism, we need to show full structure of anything we use. A long time ago, I would not be as detailed, but I've learned that you have to be detailed because if I leave it vague, then it's okay. Let's do it detailed, let's do it right, let's be good about it, yeah? Need to show full structure here. This is this is good enough. We can show lone pairs on the charged atom, yeah? These electrons do what? This is just an acid-base reaction. These electrons take the H. These electrons stay behind on oxygen. What does all this give? Well, that forms the product because that stays behind as the second lone pair. What are we forming here? That's H2SO4. That's catalyst reform. That's definition of catalyst. We started with sulfuric acid. We reformed sulfuric acid. See, it just supplied the proton to get the reaction going. Because alkenes don't react with pure water. But they will react with acid, H plus proton. Now, of course, water and acid is often shown like that, right? This reaction could be shown that way, too. Uh, okay. Question here.
It will eventually come up. Could we use water to take the proton? If I had used water to take the H, I would form that plus what? I would form that. Well, guess what? This is an aqueous acid. How does it actually exist? This is how it exists. So that's actually strictly more correct. But I personally like to use the conjugate base of the acid and reform the actual acid. That's my preference. But textbooks, and it is okay to use water here. <clears throat> Again, because how does, it, how does this really exist? Like that. So it's okay to just show that if you want. So this is hydration of an alkene. Ultimately, water is adding, but it requires an H plus catalyst for the reaction to take place. The activation energy is just way too high for it, for the alkene to react with pure water. Pure water is not reactive enough. Okay, I'm an alkene, all right? We got, we got pure water over here, we got H plus. Pure water, ooh, H plus. It's just pure water, is, it's just not enough reactivity. Okay? There's more plus here with H plus. The electrons are more attracted to H plus than to water. Way more. Okay, that's a hydration. Hydration reactions can be reversible. We can go from an alcohol and we can go to the alkene. And this would be called a, wait for it, wait for it, a dehydration. Yeah? Okay. It is reversible. We'll see that reaction during test three. And we'll say, hey guys, we can take an alcohol and we can dehydrate it to an alkene. And I'll tell you that it's reverse of what we did back here in test two. The mechanism is the exact reverse. The first thing you do in reverse is to do what to the alcohol? Adding hmm? Adding H. To, to what atom? Oxygen. Okay, adding H is called protonation. You protonate the oxygen. Then what's the next step when you go in reverse? Well, this way, water added, what's the reverse of water adding? Water eliminating, or leaving, and when it leaves, it forms a carbocation, and from there, we can go back here. It's just a reverse. That reaction is reversible, all right? We'll look at it later. I'm just sort of pointing it out now that we'll look at it later. Predict the products. Okay, good for note card right here. You got it. The first thing you have to do is what are we? What type of reaction are we doing? Well, right now it's easy because you only know two reactions. You know reaction of an alkene with HX and reaction of an alkene with aqueous acid. Now, when you get over to organic two, you're going to know like 20 or 30 reactions, and you're going to have to figure out what are we doing here. So it's actually easier right now. But what you do is you say, okay, I've got an alkene. What type of reactivity do I know there? Well, okay, we're doing it. Carbocation can do This. First thing is, what type of products can be formed here? This looks like a hydration of an alkene to give an alcohol. So that's the first thing you need to recognize here. Then you can work mechanistically. Showing mechanism is like in math working a problem with a formula. Because you don't just memorize everything in math, do you? Quick, what's 75 times 18? You didn't memorize that. Can you do it? Yeah, you have a process in your mind that you can sit down and do 75 times 18. like an equation or some systematic approach. Well, the systematic approach here is our mechanism. Thinking mechanistically, working it out, and then here's my product. 
you don't just memorize products and pull them out of the air, you work through your mechanism. Yeah? Okay? Just like working through an equation in that. All right, can you show product here? So there's, there's, there's thinking that goes in here. Somebody have the product? You can name it if you just name the OA group as a hydroxy. We haven't looked at the nomenclature of alcohols, but anybody got the product? Two hydroxy. Two hydroxy pentane. Two yeah. Two hydroxy pentane works. Later on, we'll see that's called two pentanol. Where are you going to make cation at, left or right? Yeah. On the left, secondary. And then what attacks the carbonic acid? <coughs> In this reaction, what attacks it? No, what attacks the carbonic acid? What attacks the carbonic acid? Water. Water, got to know your mechanism. Because otherwise, I'm not sure how you show product. You know, the what about stereochemistry of that product? <coughs> this is actually called a chiral carbon, and we need to show precise stereochemistry here. We'll learn that going forward. Two in the plane. Let's leave these two in the plane. Is the OH, should the OH be forward or back? H plus catalyst, this reacts here. New H on the end, cation here. And the water attacks. Remember this? What's the geometry of the cation? No planer. The water attacks. Does the water attack from the front or the back? Either, right? We said this yesterday. If it attacks from the front, we're going to get that product. Attacks from the back, we're going to get that product. And that we're going to call a racemic mixture. Those are actually an antimers. That's analogous to me making making hands. Hands. And I said, which one are we going to get? And I would say, well, this process will get both, both a right and a left hand. It's going to get both. Why does it get both? Because the carbocation that we formed as an intermediate and then water attacks it. Okay, here we go. Your water, which side do you attack from? Bond that way. Your water, well that bond's going to be that way. And it's a 50-50 chance. And we can write that. A racemic mix, we can clarify that it's a 50-50 ratio. Did we say that before? Mm -hmm. I think it's on that... Uh, important page. Uh, how about the product reaction below? And instead of water, let's use ethanol. There's an oxygen which connects to the nucleophile. And here we're using HF, which is an acid that we said we could use as catalyst. And let's keep it dry. So there's no water here.
Mainly, instead of water, it's ethanol. Okay? Ethanol has an has a oxygen lone pair. Somebody show a product here? By the way, one of our previous reactions also would give a racemic mixture. I just didn't talk about it then. So please don't think that if you look at a previous reaction that it couldn't do that too. Some things I don't talk about until later. That doesn't mean previously it didn't happen as well. I've had a question. I've had students ask, <coughs> why didn't this give, it looks like this should give a racemic mixture. I'm, yeah, it does. I just didn't talk about it then. Somebody have product down here? It's the same mechanism, the only difference is instead of water acting as a nucleophile, ethanol is acting as a nucleophile. And the product is Show ethyl here. I'm going to draw in the ethyl. Yeah? How about that? Good? Everybody see mechanism? Except it's catalyst, right? It's only a catalyst if it's reformed. That's the definition of catalyst. Everybody good with that mechanism? Mm -hmm. Okay. Roman numeral three, that's addition of alcohols to give it's an addition of an alcohol. If you take this formula, that formula now has this added to it. Two carbons, uh, H's and O's. But what, what type of compound did we make there? That's not an alcohol. That's a Yeah, that's an ether, right? Okay. That's Roman numeral three. It's the same as number two, except we use an alcohol instead of water. And if you ask me what the mechanism is, guess what I'm going to tell you? I'm going to say, it's right here, but use ethanol instead of water. Okay? I said that under number three. It's the same mechanism. It's just using ethanol instead of water. Uh, you got to see that, guys. Okay. Uh, Carbocation rearrangement. Carbocations are prone to rearranging. Did anybody ever done any carbocation rearrangements? If you take this alkene, react it with HBr, you might expect this product here based on previous discussion. <coughs> react with H plus, make carbocation where? Top or bottom? Bottom, and then what adds to carbocation? Bromide. That would give that product. That's actually the minor product here. The major product is this, with the bromine attached over here. How did this happen? Carbocation rearrangement. Okay. 
Okay. Let's take a quick two minute break and then we'll see how this reaction occurs. Okay, guys, uh, we've got H plus B or minus, we can show it ionic. Uh, alkene reacts, pull this out. So pull, the, pull the pin away from that carbon and go ahead and bonding to the H. UH there, right? Carbocation here. We see how we get this product. Bromide can just attack there. We get that product. I'm not going to show that. The carbon has a new H. Yeah? Pretty straightforward addition there. How do we get the other product, though? But we, we could back up over here. The bromide ends up there because we have this carbocation. If we could get that carbocation, could you could you show this being formed? Yeah, bromide just attacks there. Can we go from here to here? Yes. That's called a carbocation rearrangement. It's also sometimes called a skeletal rearrangement. Something here moves. I can move it, we move an arm from here to down here or something. <coughs> a skeletal rearrangement. What, what is moved? 
How many H's on this carbon? One. One. How many H's on that carbon? Mm -hmm. Zero. How many H's on that carbon? One. How many H's on that carbon now? Two. Two. It looks like an H has moved. This H, which we can draw in, yes, it's tetrahedral. I'm not showing tetrahedral nature, but I'm just showing the H in. This H actually breaks free of this carbon, and these electrons, here it is. The H is the cap on the end. Okay? Most of that is the two, two electron covalent bond. All that, the H and the two electrons, break free the carbon and migrate over. Can we show that with an arrow movement? Well, it's just moving the pin. Can you move my pin over? Grab it, move it over. It's me grabbing it and moving it over. And it's now there. I just drew in the H that moved. I did not draw in all of the H's. How does that work here? I'm an H bonded to a carbon. H and carbon. You're a carbocation. These electrons in this bond here are electrons. Electrons are attracted to positives. That's physics. So this starts attracting over here. Ooh, ooh, ooh positive carbon. Ooh, positive carbon. Ooh. And it just breaks, it moves over there. It breaks free. Now bonded there, leaving this carbon without a bond. Okay? These electrons, this can happen. But look what we went to. We went from a secondary to what? Yes. We rearranged to a better. Okay? You're a secondary cation. Here I go. That's okay, because what did I leave behind? You're tertiary. You're better. I moved over here, everything became better compared to where we were. This is called a, well, we already said that. More specifically, what moved over? H and the two electrons. H with no electrons is H plus. That's called proton. This is H and the two electrons, sometimes looked at like this, H and the electrons. What do we call this? Not hydrogen, not proton, not bromine, but bromide. This is not hydrogen, but hydride. Hydride shift. And if this is called one, because that's where you started, what do you want to call the next carbon? Two. So one, two hydride shift. What if this hydride had magically moved to that carbon? It would be a, that'd be a one three. We're not going to see any ones. But one two is by far the most common. In advanced organic, you may see some interesting, like even one five, particularly in a ring. That's just because it can come back and it can go from here to here. It's the same distance, but it was actually a one five. Most common for us is going to be one two. We may see some 1,3 in another instance. 1,2 um, hydride shift occurred here. Okay? 1,2 hydride shift is what occurred here. Now, can we get home? Now the bromide, which has been watching all this, now it can come in and bam! That gives final product. Mm -hmm. This could give a mixture. The mixture is all depending on how fast does this rearrange. If this rearranges fast, you're not going to get much of this. 
What if the rearrangement is slow? That means this lasts longer. If this lasts longer, the bromide can just attack here. It all depends on how long this survives and lasts. Now this is real data, that's known to be the major product. That means that the rearrangement is faster than bromide attacking here. In this case. For us, if you can rearrange your carbocation, always do that as the major pathway. <coughs> okay? If we if I gave you this reaction here, I would want you to show that is the major product. Rearrangement's always major product. Reaction party diagram. That should be pretty straightforward. We call this A, B. How many intermediates in this reaction? Three. Two. The secondary carbocation and the tertiary carbocation. A, B, C, and D. We're giving Reaction for the diagram for the major product. We start out with A, yeah? Okay, always need to label your <coughs> axes uh, as general. A, where do we go to? B? Where do you want to put C compared to B? Lower. But it's still a carbocation, so it's still higher than what. A, B, C, and then D. Is that good? Here we go. Boom. 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 What's the rate determining step? Yes, forming the initial carbocation. From there it's downhill. From there it rearranges to a more stable cation. There is a transition state. What does this transition state right here look like? It would look like this. It was that. That's a higher energy, energy process. The bond breaking, the bond breaking and reforming, and eventually you settle over to C. Yeah? And then the bromide attacks. That takes a little energy to get everything moving, and the bromide has to approach. And then we settle to our final product. Yeah? Carbocation rearrangement. Down below, if you take this alkene, here we're hydrating the alkene, aqueous acid. Alcohol. You might expect this to be the alcohol. Cation on top or bottom. bottom, and then if water attacked it, but then the water is going to lose a proton. But that's not the major product. The major product is the one shown over there. What's going on here? Is this a hydride shift? this way. UH there, carbocation here, everybody agree? This could come from water attacking here. But instead we get something else. We've got a carbon with three methyls attached. And this carbon over here only has one methyl attached. But now we have carbon with two instead of three, but lost one methyl. It looks like a methyl has moved over here. And indeed it has. We'd love to get a cation here, this side. 
We can do that by <laughs> moving one of these muscles over. It's analogous to moving the hydride, except this is a muffle. And that's going to give that cation there. There's still a new H there, right? Mm -hmm. I typically only draw it in once when I first add it. From then on, we know it's there. This is called what type of shift? Alkyl. Just an alkyl. The term alkalide, I ending for anion, that term that's usually not used. Seems like it should be, but you just never see that term. Alkyl. Because it is the CH3 and the two electrons. Alkyl shift. It's another type of carbocation rearrangement. Now, can we get to the major product? What's yes. next? Now, water attacks, yeah? And what does that give? now have oxygen bonded there, but it's got two H's. One lone pair, that's a positive charge. And then how do we get final product? Something has to take the H. What can take the H? Water can take it and we would reformation to a plus. There's got to be a minus here. If I notice, there's got to be a minus here, right? There's like, a, there's like a sulfate minus or something. Since there's no minus shown, I'll just show, I'll just use water. Take the H, leave it back behind, we get that product plus what? That's catalyst. That's basically acid. That's H plus just bonded to water. This is an acid catalyzed hydration of an alkene, which also has a carbocation rearrangement in there. Does it, uh, hopefully this doesn't throw anybody. Here are the OH is between the two methyls, here it's not. Does that matter? No, it does not. Things like that we will point out when it matters. I mean, I'm not even showing the tetrahedral nature of that carbon. As long as we got everything connected right, we're, we're good for now. Okay, uh, ring expansion. <clears throat> Take this alkene, which has a four-member ring over here, and react it with HBr, you get this product as a major product. And that's a five-member ring. Show mechanism for that. Uh, there's no reactivity. The only reactivity here is the alkene. We have H plus. 
Vr minus. Uh, we're going to cat eye on top or bottom? Bottom. So we pull away from the bottom <coughs> here, and we're going to get. Everybody agree? Now, bromide can attack here, but that don't give that product. <coughs> what happens next? Can we go out the what happens here is, same as previously, this carbon, here's the bond, it breaks free of there and moves over here. Here you go. There's the bond. All right? Somebody pull my finger. Over there. That's it. All right? <coughs> These electrons break free and move over here. What does that give? I'm going to draw it just like another alkyl shift. But since it was part of a ring, it actually led to the ring being expanded. It's now a five-member ring. Everybody see that? I can redraw this. You don't need to if you doing it on the quiz, it, 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 this is it. What's the next step? Bromide adding here, and what does that do? It gets product. Because this is essentially a five-membered ring with a CH3 here and a CH3 here. Five-membered ring with CH3 here, CH3 here. How did the bromine become bonded to the carbon with one of the melts? I'm showing it right there. So this is an alkyl shift that leads to a ring expansion. It looks a little bit like, whoa, what's going on here? But when we see it, does it look pretty straightforward like before? Okay. Here's a four-membered ring. These electrons just break free. See, the, the fist and the elbow are the atoms. The arm are the electrons. The electrons break free and move over there, bonded to that one. But now the ring is bigger. Ring expansion. We can also do ring contractions. By the way, that cup here we didn't clarify, but what type of cation did we initially form? Secondary? What, what type did we get when we did the ring expansion. Tertiary. You're only going to do a carbocation rearrangement when it goes to a better carbocation. Or maybe sometimes to an identical one. But that's going to be a little bit more rare. What you typically never do is go from, I like that, you never go worse. You never go from tertiary to secondary. Why would it do that? Typically not going to ever see that. Unless there's some other reason that you can invoke or make an argument for. 
Try that one on your own down there. Full, complete mechanism. Where the mechanism is where we show all electron movement. And I gave you a page of describing what mechanisms are about. In the what color handout, the green one, I believe. Yeah, free information. Expansions, it should be expansions and contractions. Yeah. Um, Roman numeral five, ring forming. Can we form any rings? Uh, look at this reaction. This is called a diene. Got two enes. I know you guys have been dying to see this type of compound. Two ene. Okay? By the way, if it had three, what would you call it? Diene. Yes, okay. You get the picture. If you take this diene here, react with HI, you get this six membered ring. Can you show a mechanism for that? How does this reaction take place? Is it just magic? <coughs> we can say all these reactions are magic. No, in organic chemistry, we be looking, showing exactly how reactions take place through what we call them, the mechanism. And we use what are called curved arrows, mechanism arrows. I used to say mechanism arrows. Some books call them curved arrows or curly arrows. I think these are curved arrows. Okay. Uh, where do you want to make cation at? I say top or bottom. We actually have four choices. Here, 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 here. Where's the best place to make a cation? Actually, right here. Right there. H plus. That would give... UH there. I believe that's right, yeah. Common mistake is to lose carbons, okay? Lose carbons or, okay, just not have this correct. What can attack the I plus? I'm sorry, the C plus, carbocation. I minus could. But that ain't that product over there. What else could attack the uh, carbon cut? We've got this alkene over here. Have you ever seen an alkene attack a cation? If you haven't, I'd ask you to look right up here. Alkene attacking a cation. Does it have to only be H? H plus? Or could it be C plus? It can be C plus. Nothing magical so much about the H, but it can be C plus. This can attack here. Can it? It looks like it's way out there. I mean, how, how could this hand slap this in? Why well, don't I do this? What if I redraw this like this?
How many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, what do we need here? I have that. Here's the new H. And this carbon also has a methyl. And it's a carbocation. That just means equal. Are these the same things? I just have rotated some of this around. Right? Like, like this. That has rotation and moved it closer. Now, this can attack here. Where are we going to leave cation? Left or right? Right. This breaks away. And it can go up here. Swing up and attack up here. Okay. Here's the pi bond. Electrons just break away and go up there and attack the carbon. And that's going to give what? It's going to give that. Which bond did we just make here? Just made that bond right there. Where's the carbocation? Here? Mm -hmm. The carbocation is right here. Which, which carbon is losing a bond there? Mm -hmm. This error, let me ask you this over here. I should, I should have asked you this first. Which carbon, A or B, is bonding to this one up here? Which carbon is bonding up here? The answer should clearly be A. If you know what the arrow means. Here we go. Here's A and B. A is my shoulder. B is my wrist. Okay? There's something up here that I'm going to attack. Okay? Shoulder or wrist. Which one ends up bonding to the upper thing? Shoulder is now bonded up there. The arrow is pulling the electrons away from B. Somebody pull my arm up there. Grab it. But the shoulder is bonded up there. This is hinging up. A is bonding up here. See, that's where you guys all typically mess up. You think, hey, I'm showing where B is bonding. No, arrows don't show movement of atoms. They show movement of electrons. The electrons are swinging up. The shoulder is now bonded up there. A is now bonded up there. That's A and B. But when this moves up, B is losing a bond. And B is now a positive charge. Because if you look at how many is there, there's only one H there. One H there it only has three bonds, positive charge. OK? Now, if I see how we get home from there, what's next? I died, which has been watching all this, bam, right there. That gives final product. The only thing new here is the carbocation, instead of I minus attacking here, the other alkene attacked it, and we made a ring. Because this was a intramolecular attack. So carbocations, I mean alkenes can also attack carbocations. Down below, by the way, ring forming reactions. Uh, back to me with the uh, mar marijuana plant, what's it called? Cannabis sativa, is that right? Marijuana? Uh -huh. Over here, there's a mechanism. Cannabidiol is converted to THC, tetrahydrocannabidiol. Uh, it's not diol, it's dull, cannabidiol. This is a diol because we've got two alcohols. There's only one alcohol here, it's actually phenol. But... Okay? 
the marijuana plant does this. This chemistry takes place in the, in the plant. It's natural product chemistry. Mother Nature is a wild and crazy chemist. Making complex molecules from carbon dioxide and oxygen and water. Don't forget to water your marijuana plants. Water is very important. Um, or your roses or whatever you grow. Okay? You can show a mechanism for this. Alright? For practice. Alright? What's going on? That's H plus there, yeah? Okay. Uh, next. Polymerization. Alkenes can be polymerized. Typically with an H plus catalyst. <coughs> uh, since we're being videoed, I need to say that marijuana is illegal in Georgia. <laughs> I believe it's legal in California and maybe Colorado. Uh, it's legal in a lot of places. Okay. But I believe it's still remains illegal in Georgia. Thank you. It is. Unless it's a thing medically, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's not legal in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd be. It's not about the marijuana law. It's only for medical. It is. No, no. <laughs> okay, so how can we polymerize an alkene? Um, anybody familiar with any alkene polymers? I think this is called polypropylene or polyethylene. You ever heard of these things? If you, oh. if you polymerize ethene, what do you get? Polyethene or polyethylene. If you polymerize propene, what do you get? Polypropylene. The, the lean is kind of a slang term. It's, um, that's, actually, that's actually propene, right? We're going to make polypropylene. Can we do that? H plus catalyst. Can alkene react with H plus? Yes. Where are you going to make cation? Left or right? On the left. This breaks away there, comes here, and we get boom, 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 new H there, cation here. Yeah? What can attack the cation? Now note, I'm not showing a minus up here. There has to be one. We'll talk about what acids are best. To get the polymer, what attacks the cation? What is a polymer? The monomer reacts with itself over and over and over. This reacts with this. Well, can it? If we had an alkene, could it react with that? Yeah. It could attack that, just like that attack that plus, this can attack that plus. Where are we going to leave cation at? Left or right? So this breaks away here, attacks here. What does that do? Well, let's draw it, correct. Um, I reckon I'll start with... Well, let's do this. Let's label this A, B, C. What here? D, E, F. What bond am I making between what two letters? <coughs> what two letters are now bonded together as a result of my arrow? F and B. F and B. Where's the cation at? The new cation. E. 
Yes. Let's look at this. Boom, boom. This is D, E, F. F is now bonded to B, and B is bonded to A and C. And C has a new age. I'll keep drawing that one in. We just made that bond, and cation is where? E. There. What can attack that cation? Another alkene. G H I, is that right? If this alkene attacks here, where are we going to leave cation at? H or I? H. This breaks away here, bonds here. What letters are we bonded together here? Yes. I'm, my arrow is pulling these electrons out. It's like grabbing it. The arrow is like you're grabbing it there, pulling it and bonded it here. It's pulling it away from H. Uh, let's see what we can draw here. Boom, boom. That'd be G, H, I. H is now bonded to here, and there's that, and there's this, 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 H, and there's that, that's H to E, we just made an H to E bond, you can label the rest there, yeah? Where's the cation at over here? The cation is where? H. H. I'm sorry. You're exactly right. Uh, exactly right. Uh, e. So this this would be I. I think I meant to. I think I meant for this to be the original. Um, uh, this would be G H I. And the cation is on H here. Yeah. We just made I to E bond. <coughs> what can attack this cation? <coughs> yes, somebody stopped him. I think I'll end there. We can keep going, we can keep going. Let's do it a gazillion times. We end up with a huge molecule called polymer. How do we show polymers? We show or a repeating unit, okay? Now this right here is made all, my, all that will be shown. What do we have here? If you start with the H, this is where it started. We have a CH2 carbon methyl. What comes next? CH2 carbon methyl. What comes next? CH2 carbon methyl. If we keep going, it will just be repeating over and over CH2 carbon methyl. CH2 carbon methyl. CH2 carbon methyl. Can we show that somehow? Abbreviated? Yes. CH2 carbon methyl. Now it's bonded to something else, but you can just sort of enclose that in parentheses CH2 carbon methyl, CH2 carbon methyl, CH2 carbon methyl. Show it like this with an N, and the N means some huge number. We don't ever clarify what N is, it just denotes that it's a huge number.
and that's what I'm kind of showing there. And that's how you show a polymer, and it comes from this type of mechanism here. What type of acid would you use? Would you use HBr to do this? Why would you not want to use HBr? <coughs> because Br minus is a good nucleophile. Br minus would add here, and you would just get an addition of HBr and some polymerization. What type of acid would you use? You would use an acid in which the conjugate base will not do anything. Did we say tell, show such acids? HF or H2SO4. I showed you those acids. Same ones we use for hydration of alcohol. Yes. Uh, this is this polymerization was initiated by a cation. H plus is a cation, yeah. It's thus called a cationic polymerization. Uh, Superglue is a polymerization whenever it hardens. But that's an anionic polymerization. It's initiated by a, or an anion. Something happens? Some approaches She was in my class. Yeah, I think she was good. She said she was okay. Halogen to an alkene. We will be doing this in lab. So we just 
from the meeting lab. By the way, I think Monday, Tuesday, we're doing recrystallization. Yeah, I have, there's a video for that. Okay. And then I think the next lab next week would be the bromination here of an alkene. Uh, showing chlorination here. Okay. The halogens here looks nonpolar. But they're schizophrenic. <coughs> and they are they're easily polarizable. Polarity can be induced. Just like an alkane is considered nonpolar, but alkane rubbing up against each other can induce polarity. Okay. Well, halogens are easily induced to become polar. You just have to kind of know that. All right. So it's kind of contradictory. Is it polar or not? Well, officially it's nonpolar, but it's inducible, polarizable. Um, now it's not ionic. You would never show Cl plus, Cl minus formal ions. Like HCl can be shown ionic, but not chlorine or bromine. Halogens are not ionic. But these electrons can be attracted to one of the halogens.